at John chapter 9 and we're going to be thinking about that passage where Jesus heals a blind man in a very unconventional way. Uh, so the passage is actually John chapter 9 verses 1 to 41 and if you do have the time and would like to read in your own time that would be great. I'm just going to read the uh, first part of this scripture reading. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Jesus answered, It was neither that this man sinned, nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and applied the clay to his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went away and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbours and those who previously saw him as a beggar were saying, Is not this the one who used to sit and beg? Others were saying, This is he. Still others were saying, No, but he's like him. He kept saying, I am the one. So they were saying to him, How then were your eyes opened? He answered, the man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went away and washed and I received sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. Jesus spits on the ground, makes some clay and then puts it on this blind man's eyes. And then says, go to uh, the pool, Siloam, and wash there, which is where people went and washed and they were healed. But it was a process. First Jesus touched him, he sent him, and the guy was healed. And of course, what comes afterwards is again this massive controversy uh, with the Pharisees, because uh, the day when Jesus healed the blind man was a Sabbath day, and Pharisees were not pleased about this. And what really struck me in that is that there is the law, that there are ways in which they do things when they worship God. And for the Pharisees, that became more important than the amazing miracle that Jesus performed. There was something so much bigger happening but it was almost like the Pharisees were blinded to it. They were more concerned about the Sabbath. They were more concerned about Jesus not doing the right thing than actually the Son of God touching someone who was blind and who just had to earn his living by begging and healing him. That just went out of the window. <laughs> And then there is, at the end of this passage, there is uh, a little bit when uh, the man and Jesus has a little conversation again. Jesus heard that they had put him out and finding him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Now what's happening here is Pharisees do not like the way the man claims uh, that Jesus has healed him. So they put him out of the synagogue. Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and he is the one who is talking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world, so that those who do not see may see. And that those who see 
may become blind. I wonder if the Pharisees were blinded to what Jesus was doing because they were just so worked up about what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing, how the rules went um, in uh, the Mosaic law. But at the same time, this man's eyes were opened. And by doing this, Jesus is actually doing a prophetic thing. Jesus has come, just like he's opened the eyes of the blind man, to open our eyes so that we may see him, the Son of God, who came as a man into this world, suffered everything that we have suffered, died on the cross and rose again, and that we might see his works, we might see who he is, and we might believe in him. His presence, his conversation with us, his love for us, opens our eyes to the truth of what everything is about. And the truth is that he loves us. That's why he died for us. The truth is that he is good and he wants to give life and hope to all of us. And as we continue this uh, time of Lent, thinking about what Jesus has been through, I pray that he may lighten your burdens, be with you, lavish you in his love, be such a blessing that every single area of your lives that might be blinded to the blessings of Jesus, and you can't see what he's doing, you may be able to see. The interesting thing is Jesus does such an unusual thing to heal the man. And sometimes God is working in our lives in an unusual way. So we're kind of blinded to it because we're not used to these unusual things. We can't make anything of it. It becomes illogical to us why we should be going through what we are going through if Jesus is really at work. To us, it doesn't make sense. But for God, it does. And we can't always see his thoughts. We can't always understand uh, what he's doing in our lives. We have to trust that he's doing good. My ways are not your ways, says the Lord and his ways are good. May you be surrounded with the goodness of his love.